This is the Fitness Fest podcast, highlighting health and fitness professionals across the globe and giving you the tools for growth. Let's start the show. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Fitness Fest podcast. My name is Tyler Valencia. We've got another great episode for you listeners. Today we have Angela Hamilton. She is the owner of Simple Jane. They do some great products in the CBD area. And again, with this podcast, the goal that we we started off with and what we really want to achieve is just showing trainers health and fitness professionals, that there's many routes you can take. There's, you might start as a personal trainer or a group exercise instructor, wellness coach, whatever that might be. There's so many different paths. And here today we have somebody that started off somewhere different and then now is just blowing up with her great company. So Angela, thank you for coming on and uh, being our guest today. Hi, Tyler and FitFest and FitFest fans. Thank you so much for having me too. And you are exactly right in this crazy journey that I've gone along and started, you know, in the fit- fitness industry so many years ago, it feels like, well, 15, a little over 15 now. Um, as a Pilates instructor, actually, I, I hurt my back and wanted to get some strengthening exercises in. And before you know it, I'm teaching Pilates and the rest they say is history. As far as, you know, teaching group classes and diving right in, I've you know loved every piece of it. And now here we are 15 years later, the evolution into the CBD product that I wish I would have known so many years, you know, ahead of time and before when I was really training with a lot of clients. But um, it certainly has been a journey, so I'm, I'm happy to be in front of my peers and share with um, the fitness community about not only CBD, but you know wh- how people can use it in their lives to recover faster and all the great health benefits, but also as far as an income stream, which is important um, for trainers and studio owners as well. Very important topic you hit there on the income stream. And uh, before we jump into uh, the meat and potatoes of the podcast, I got to mention that we do have our lovely co-host here, uh, Janice, owner of Fitness Fest. She's going to chime in down the road on a couple of questions. But just in case, listeners, you hear a voice that you're like, wait a minute, that's not Tyler. Or that's not Angela. Janice is sitting right next to me. And, uh, I'm in the background right now, but I won't <laughs> stay here too long. <laughs> but uh, we got uh, such a great host that all three of us wanted to jump on this. So. Uh, Angela, will you start us off just talking about your story, talking about, uh, you know, your route, your road to becoming a Pilates instructor? Was that always something that you wanted to be or is it something that came up and all that kind of good stuff? Just start at the beginning and uh, I know the listeners want to hear this good stuff. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Um, as I, I mentioned a little bit before, I did. I came across the fitness industry through a back injury and, uh, you know, I was a stay at home mom and and um, just never really understood how to use my core effectively. And I would always have back problems. So I found Pilates and fell in love with really the process of it and everything and went out and I taught a few really uncomfortable group lessons. You know, I went out of my neighborhood actually to when I went to go get my certification to go uh, teach the group classes because I was embarrassed. You know, I was like, oh, I wanted to get a few underneath my belt. So I made it through the first awkward group classes there and then developed into personal training. I really realized that there was different other modalities other than Pilates that I wanted to explore. And so as most um, people in the fitness industry do, they just latch on to the things that they love. And before you know it, there's Tai Chi. I started t- teaching uh, Tai Chi movement and really uh, meaningful exercise. And then um, in 2007, I started, well, I started teaching with the resorts in town and everything, you know, and Pilates classes, uh, privates and groups. But then in 2007, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Oh, wow. And that really, um, of course, changed things, but also changed my focus into my fitness um, routine and the way that I was going to rehab myself. So it was really Pilates and Tai Chi movement and really a mindful more way of and, and exercise a lot of walking to keep my energy up through, mm-hmm. you know, all the chemo and surgeries and everything. And coming out of that, I recognized that, wow, this was not only a thing where your body wanted to be in shape and all of that, but this was mentally, physically, it was, uh, it was an all uh, encompassing piece of that was really important as far as recovery. 
So um, that was a big door opener too. You know, I got to meet a lot of things changed in that way, but um, it's also how I started to be introduced to um, recovery methods of training. So I, my focus switched, as I said, so I was training more with oh, people that um, needed more rehab. And I worked with a chiropractic center. And so we were doing Pilates. Um, he was doing the rehab and then I was doing the Pilates piece and the exercise to keep everything kind of in place. Uh, and that was awesome. But it's still in that part, I felt like there was something I wasn't able to give my clients. There was a lot of people that have um, kind of what I call mystery diseases or mystery ailments where it's maybe a tendonitis or something. And so that was always in the back of my mind. Um, and then as I found CBD, which was, you know, we'll get into that a little bit later, but that really changed things. And that kind of catapulted me over into the product side of things where I was like, this is changing people. I know how to help people recover faster from their injuries and, you know, perform better using it pre-workouts and things. So it just really uh, enveloped everything that I was doing in the past, kind of culminating to this point. Oh, yeah. Very cool stuff. And um, I think that uh, you touched on a great point in terms of recovery and how you were introduced to this piece of CBD. And, uh, you know, just for the listeners, I think that that's such a educational part right there that some people think right when they hear CBD, oh, you know, I'm going to get high or they think that there's some type of psychedelic effect to it when a lot of the people that myself and and you, when you come in touch with people, they're using it for recovery. And I can't tell you how many different products I've utilized for the type of um, exercise and training that I do. And not until I came in touch with you um, in April did this stuff, it, it really just clicked in my head. And I think the educational part, just teaching uh, consumers what CBD is and kind of how they can incorporate is such a, um, it's a piece that will need to, uh, we'll say, evolve with time. So can you give a little bit more information about um, just CBD in general and how um, yeah. consumers can uh, you know, essentially learn the difference between what, you know, the, the general con, uh, population thinks about and what you guys actually do. Sure. And, and thank you. Cause you know, we throw around, especially ourselves here at simple Jane, we use MCBD very, we throw the term around, but it actually stands for cannabidiol. And, um, that's the longer version of it. And it is part of the cannabis plant, but it's part of the, the part that we use is part of, um, imported hemp. So we use the hemp plant, all of this, we like to say it's all of the healthy and none of the high. So, you know, there's no way, and especially topically at this point that, mm -hmm. um, that you can get high from any of the product. There's not even any, even THC in our products. Um, and there's some back and forth about that as far as whether you need THC in it or not. But Tyler, as you and I have really seen oh, yeah. in our products and, and everybody that uses it, I think you'd be surprised that it, it actually is effective and it works great oh, yeah. and you don't need the THC in it to be effective. And that's where really we recognize the benefit of it was people didn't want to, they wanted the the healing parts of it, but they didn't want to have to go to a dispensary or they didn't want to, you know, they still had questions about it. A lot of stigma about if it's marijuana or pot or, or you know, whatever the thought process in them of your past um, can really affect your decision making right now as about CBD, you know? So if you, um, but back to the point of like, you've, you're, you're using it for recovery. Some people are using it for more of a um, pre-workout because to even get into a workout, I know a lot of times I wake up, I'm sore. I'm like, my muscles are cranky. You know, I've got arthritis now and joints. It's just, you know, it's not as great as when I woke up when I was 20. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> so using CBD just as a wake up agent and just to get the muscles moving and flowing and warming up pre-exercise was huge. And people started coming back to us and saying, Hey, I've been using it in this way. And we, you know, we've been founding these results and that really just opened our eyes to this whole new way to incorporate this all natural plant that, you know, is available to everybody and you don't have to have a card or anything special to use it. I, um, I, I tend to use it. Um, and I love your, I love your heart stone. Do you call it a stone? 
that that I bought from yeah, you at Fitness yeah. Fest conference. And so I just rub it on you know, my low my low back. I use it to low, rub on my low back and my hips. And I've kind of found that uh, more of a maintenance kind of thing. Um, so that it really mm-hmm. is really helpful and beneficial. So um, that's what I've been doing. Yeah. I love yeah. that. Yeah, thank you. And definitely because the maintenance of it, you know, people think, well, I'm not really hurt or injured right now. It doesn't really apply to me. And as we know in the fitness industry, you know, injuries that happen all overnight or suddenly isn't an overnight injury. It's something that's been happening along the way. And that, you know, by the time you get an injury, it's been happening for a long time before it Right. And then it might even be almost too late or too late. So, yeah. So that's what I've been enjoying is just, you know, usually my hip abductors or my low back, not, not in a bad, bad way, but if I, I find if I rub with the stone, um, it, it never gets so far, it's never gotten worse. So just from working out that I might be a little more sore in those areas Mm -hmm. that it's, it's just, you know, I've really, uh, like I said, enjoyed that over the past few months. Oh, good. I'm glad. And Tyler, and just to kind of let him know what the stone that Janice is, we end up using a Himalayan salt stone, which is in the form of a heart and everybody looks at it and it's like, Oh, that's you, you know, but it really has holds this deeper yeah. purpose and the, the rounding of the heart and everything really gets deep into the muscles. And so, oh, it feels so good. Yes, I mean, of course, it felt better when you rubbed it on me than I rub it on myself. So you, you need to come by. <laughs> That's what everybody says, you know, but you know, so to that point, right. we, um, we're doing more uh, videos of showing people really how to use it. And I know that yeah. never, that my husband says the same thing, you know, I, I like it better when you do it, but the, uh, the effects because of the salt component and the Himalayan salt of it, it replenishes the skin and the muscles with um, uh, minerals and trace minerals. So a lot of the cramping that people have when they're working out or loss of minerals and things like that, the Himalayan salt really helps to replace those things so that you don't get as many, as many cramps and muscle soreness and things like that. So that again, another great discovery. And I always say this is like, we're, we're not doctors, but man, we just discovered this stuff out of like pure, uh, like using it and really the research of it, really finding out and then digging deeper because once you understand how CBD relates to, and the, the salt stone relates to fascia, then the, to your point, Tyler, then you, it all starts making sense. You know, you start understanding like we all have these receptors in our CBD receptors in our bodies. So when we start feeding them the right nutrients, and if you can just explain it in that simple term, you're feeding those receptors the right nutrients topically, it helps to reduce inflammation and which, you know, increase oxygen uptake. It can just really um, reduce lactic acid and a lot of other things that people suffer from that don't want to make people work out, right? So a lot of times when people after have such hard workouts that, uh, and they're just getting started, especially, it doesn't feel good to get right back into the gym you know, all the time and like make those muscles hurt worse. So if you can give them some faster recovery tools in their tool box, whether, and that's whether it's foam rolling or CBD or whatever kind of great tools that you have in your toolbox to help that person recover faster, they'll want to get eager and back into the gym because that's a feeling of success. You know, the more successful somebody feels when they're working out, the better, the more they're, they're likely to stay onto it. So we want to, yeah, keep that going. Exactly. So, so what what's the path you took to Simple Jane? You know, from from your your Pilates, your personal training. What's the path you took, and from that, what kind of advice can you give to new trainers? Well, the path. So what's what's yeah, the path you, know, you took? I hate to be cliche, but it really did find me. <laughs> so, so when I was a few years ago, you know, as I said, we was doing the training and clients working with clients. And really not find missing, having that missing piece. And we were in Colorado and it was when the dispensaries first became legal. And I thought in my, my son and my husband were going skiing and I thought, oh, I'm going to, you know, check out this dispensary and see what's happening, all the, the hoopla and everything. And so 
I go in and I listen to this uh, two older ladies, and they were in their sixties. I'm not that sixties older, but they were sixties. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, disclaimer, huge disclaimer. But they were older than myself, and I felt like I was one of the older people to be going in the dispensaries, which again shows you kind of the ignorance of myself, even you know going into there. Anyway, I get in there and I hear these ladies talking about this weed lube that their friend was making. And I, my ears are like, what is this weed lube that they're talking about? And is this a thing? And so I get home and I, I research on Google and I tell my husband, I'm like, this thing, this is a real thing. Like there's, you know, but people, women were using um, this lubricant for just more of a postmenopausal health and uh, sensuality. And it was just, it just opened the doors. And I thought, wow, this is really something that people need to know about, but I didn't want to have to go into a dispensary to find out about it, you know? So I start, I start putting two and two together. The massage oil develops into like the athletic massage oil. So it really, st people start using it for period pain, but then um, my friends who are runners and things start coming back and they're like, wow, this is really helping me recover. Like, and my legs are feeling so much better. So we're like, we need to, you know, we need to move this along into more of an athletic type of um, uh, product that everybody can use, right? That it's not just for women or whatever. So, so that spurred the, the growth of that. But what really got the connection to me um, back to the salt stone component was the fascia piece of it. So I start finding out all these great things and I get to the, I go to the idea conference and in LA and, um, start listening to all the fascia, um, topics and how CBD really. And I think what's missing there with everybody was that they the, CBD component and how the endocannabinoid system works with inflammation, works with our immune system, works with our other systems to really bring this together. And I thought, now, now we're on to something. So I get back and I'm, you know, sharing this newfound information with everybody. And once people, again, once people recognize it, like, oh, it's the fascia, it's the salt, it's the CBD, it's the combination of these things that really start addressing tendonitis, like plantar fasciitis, the, the things that I could never really fully address as a trainer, especially, and even as a rehab, being in the rehab business is working with chiropractic clinics. Like I knew a certain set of tools, but this just ramped things up. And so, you know, that really spurred me into, okay, you know, I have this great training background, but I'm right at this point where you're only hour by hour, right? My training, if I'm not there for an hour, there's no more money if somebody calls in sick or, you know, you get into that trainer's uh, mindset of, well, my clients are right in front of me. What else can we offer them to make their lives better, but also to supplement these different streams of income? Because, um, and this is, I'm sure you have po different podcasts on this, but this, once you get in for an hour for hour, kind of trading time for money, once and being in Arizona, summertime comes, there's no more, you know, people leave for the summer. So you have to adjust your business for that and have other things that either supplement or provide value for it, whether whether it's a meal plan or a product or um, a set of online resources or, or something to really uh, make your ro your program really robust so that if clients cancel for the day or, you know, you don't have anything going on, you have other streams of revenue coming in that can help support you. Right. And that's what we really want this Fitness Fest podcast series to be all about is uh, there are so many people who want to either are already in the fitness industry or want to be in it because they see the rewards. That's their passion. They want to make a difference. And so there are, and, and we really truly want to help people. And so you have found a way to, you truly want to help people. And I, I know that because of our conversations together, but of course you also need to make a living and what better way to make a living is to doing what you love and making and changing people's lives for the better, you know, with, through, through your, through your simple Jane products and through your training. So, um, so that's awesome. Uh, we, we love your product and, um, 
We love that the things you're saying about building your business and using your time wisely to help them and to your your revenue stream. So, well, thank you. Yeah, it's been great to have be a part of this community, uh, and for sure, you know, the people that you bring together at Fit Fest and everything, and and meeting. Um, just the, the studio owners that really know, uh, that have been in the industry for a while. So it's not just new people that are coming on, you know, and just kind of new to the industry. It's people that have been there for a while who have their foothold in, uh, in the industry and really know the different ways to make a career out of the business. Because, um, it, you know, if you're just taking one class and you're driving over to across town to another class, that gets super tiring and after a while, you know, and so, and, and also it's, you know, you factor in there your time for your money. So if you're driving the one side of town and then you have to get to another client on the other side of town, just there's a good solid hour or so in between there that's happening. So little things like that, the, the fact that you bring together this podcast and the source of knowledge, uh, the people that can help the, the younger ones in the industry to be like, Hey, this is your red flags of, you know, what to avoid, uh, in this career space. If you want to have longevity of it and really make a decent, really income because you can do both. I mean, you really can. It's, it's not just meant to be, um, you know, a $20 group class here and there it, it, for fun. And unless you want that to be that way. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And before we go on to more talking uh, along this path of talking about the business side and even the marketing, which uh, we're definitely going to uh, stop by um, mm-hmm. in a bit, I do want to touch on what you mentioned about the whole recovery factor, because I think that is something that sometimes we miss as trainers. Here is something uh, we'll talk about exercise in general. Not everybody wants to do. I think that that's something that entry level trainers, they sometimes miss the point on that. They think that Mm -hmm. I like fitness. Why doesn't everybody else like fitness? And so being able to realize and be a little bit more uh, empathetic to what others and how they feel, that's such an important key to one, keep them coming back, which is also part of the business model. If you don't have uh, clients coming in, you're not to be making any money. So here are some of that. When they're not with you, they can be working on their recovery, feeling better and ultimately wanting to exercise more, more healthy people, people equals a better thing for us all. So really, really good point there. And so to continue on, because one, we want to make sure that our listeners are um, getting some great resources out of this. And a big thing that when Janice and I were talking about guests for the podcast, we immediately thought about you and the marketing you do for Simple Gene. Not only is it clean, it looks great and can you give us a little insight into what got you down the path in terms of how you market Simple Jane, but even um, if there's any experience or even education you did to um, you know, put out such great marketing materials? Oh, thank you. Uh, well, and simple, we try to keep it simple with Simple Jane, and that was really the main um, piece of it. If you, if you look and you see that... Um, and, and the name comes from a few different things. First of all, you know, we're all kind of simple Janes. We're all just kind of trying to do our thing and, you know, make life easy and uh, simplify the, the main piece of it. But it's also the simplest form of Mary Jane or the marijuana or the, or the cannabis plant. So it's the simplest form of that, which is kind of a play on words there as well. Um, and so we wanted to keep all of our ingredients are super clean, organic when, pro- when possible. And of course, the CBD is clean, triple tested. Um, imported and it's just really the cleanest, finest ingredients. So that was part of it. And we found that, well, when we were really launching it, that the putting the cannabis plan on it, on our um, branding and things like that, really, we came up with a lot of still what I call stoner stigma, even just putting that leaf on the plant set or leaf on the label or whatever, brought up this, this fear in people that it was, oh, you know, devil's weed or devil's lettuce or whatever they call it, you know. And so we decided um, to take to not put any of it and let the product really speak for itself. And not because we were hiding behind it, but because we stood behind cannabis in the plant. And, you know, we wanted people to use it not and 
feel the effects, not knowing, oh, it, you know, the CBD and not being so caught up on the CBD aspect of it, right? So we wanted moms to be able to put it on their bedside and grandmothers be able to, you know, use it without any fear of um, stigma or what their friends were going to say about it or any of that. So we, we really like to call ourselves a crossover brand where, you know, you can feel safe, uh, anybody giving it to your friend or your family member, or your mother, or your father, anybody that because they would use it and feel great and not even might not even recognize that it had CBD or um, anything else in it from that standpoint. But that was definitely trial by error because as we went to the market, um, with people, the feedback would people say, I like the fact that it doesn't have any, you know, cannabis on it. I like the fact that it doesn't. And, um, that was important to us, you know? Uh, so we listened and we just, we just kept moving forward with like the product stands for itself. It doesn't need a, anything else behind it and let people try it and, you know, see for themselves. Well, that was really smart that you recognized um, the difference and you changed it because a lot of people in business, you know, they make, you know, an assumption and then they put something out there and it's not right for them and they don't even pay attention. So we all learn from our, I won't even call it a mistake, but um, we, we learn from that and you, you recognize that pretty quickly. It sounds like I want to talk about, um, the first time you and I met and um, we met at my daughter's um, event, Fitness Fest Unplugged, Mm -hmm. this past March. And I won't forget how beautiful your booth looked and how attractive and appealing it was, you know, to go up to it and, you know, try the little samples of the scrub and all that. And that's what attracted me to your booth, first of all, and the fact that you were standing in front of it and talking to people Mm -hmm. and you and I struck up a conversation and that's when you, um, you know, we talked about you coming then to the following month to fitness fest at the Sheridan, our fitness fest conference and expo. And again, you know, this is, and this is marketing. Um, a lot of people, you know, might do, um, you know, some networking, um, activities and some booths, vendors and all that. And, and that, and so you had a booth at our expo. It's, and, you know, of course, Fitness Fest has workshops and certifications, but then we also have the expo. So I, you know, again, your booth was very attractive. I came up to you and talked to you and I was so impressed by the way you were networking with, isn't that where you met Tyler? <laughs> the way you were networking, we talked about you networking with uh, the other, the other vendors, the other sponsors, you even took workshops so that you could understand what my event was all about. Mm-hmm. So, and, and of course you're a trainer, so you're interested in about it. And the fact that you're, you know, I just, it, I've been doing these conferences for over 20 years. And when people do well, it's because they're not sitting behind their booth on their cell phone and then whining because they're not doing well. You're out there networking, you're talking to people, you're helping people understand what your product is all about. So if you want to speak on that right. at all, but I just was so impressed well, with you on that. Well, thank you. And especially coming from you of being in the industry for so long. And I feel like I I do. I feel like if you're investing your time and money in going to an event, and that's really what it is, you it's an investment of your time, energy and money. And you have to make that investment work for you. Never should you look to the conference planner. And I'm not just saying this because it's you, but never should you look to the conference planner for for them to rely on all of your marketing plans, because there is a pre conference that happens. There's at the conference that happens. And then there's an after. And then there's everything, you know, like throughout the whole rest of the year that you can kind of do like little highlights and things of. But if you're if you're not capitalizing and really, uh, I look at it, we look at it as a big party, you know, we're going to go to this big party, and we're going to meet lots of friends. And we're going to find the ones that we really are, you know, aligned with what we believe in and, and see what we can collaborate on. Because collaboration is the key. It is the key. And, and to your point, if you're, you know, the, I know those days get long and everything else, but if you're back there just hanging out at the booth and expecting to only get the, the 
and that you're not tracking down people, but it's, you're just out there talking to people of being interested. Hey, what's your business about? How can we work together? How can I help you in your business? You know, and making those types of connections has led us to this point of where we are right now, you know, and this incredible. And so to that point, it just evolves of, um, making different connections. And it's not about, Oh, get out there and network and, you know, all of that. It's, wow, let's make, let's meet some people, you know, and when you come at, through it, through those eyes of let's meet people that have the same interests that we do, and then stay on top of it. After the conference is over, you don't just stop, you know, talking to the people <laughs> It would be like, you know, nice to meet you at the party, but that's it, you know, so it's you, the conversation continues. And that's where we find real value of just staying in front of on a regular basis, being able to stay in front of that audience um, on a regular basis helps a lot for the next conference so that now people are already familiar with you and your brand. And maybe they didn't get to you before, you know, last year, but here you are again. And I can tell you that people appreciate the fact that you have been in business, you know, you're there year after year, because some people will say, oh, you know, I, that shows to them that you're not just in it for this short, short term experience and that your business is really legit. You hit on it. Definitely hit it on right there with so many good points, the networking, the follow up and the consistency of being a business owner or even being professional, which sometimes we forget that mm -hmm. aspect with being in the health and fitness industry. We think that sometimes we clock in, we clock out, but there's so many different pieces that go into being a professional and achieving success. So it's really great that you shared those points. And with what we've been talking about and even um, what I've experienced with some of the other guests is there's this, um, the best way to say it is that a lot of people that come on this podcast, they're very open to ideas. They're open to change and they're open to uh, the experience, the risk. And sometimes, um, you know, mm -hmm. There's their safety and we, we want safety, but at the same time, there's these different tangents that come off that lead to great paths for you. You, you shared with us that you started off in the Pilates realm and then with uh, your health and how you became uh, across CBD and, the, you know, essentially the, the risk you took in starting your own business for new trainers or even existing trainers, what's some advice that you can, um, along already, if you've shared some great advice, but what do you think are some pieces that are great advice to, to keep in mind, but also maybe advice that you wish you had when you were starting off in the industry? Uh, well, I wish I would have stayed. Um, well, geez. Um, I think right from the beginning, I, I re recognize the value of mentors are finding people to study under. And I would go to any class and the people that I really respected in my industry and in my niche. I remember um, taking, you know, traveling to California when I wanted to learn Tai Chi. I um, took classes with David Dorian Ross, who is, he's been on the PBS, all of the PBS um, Tai Chi videos and things like that. And I remember being really nervous, like calling him and contacting him because I wanted to go study with him with what I was doing with Zen Method and the Tai Chi that I was doing. And I would encourage everybody just to, you know, to make the phone call, to not be afraid to, if there's somebody that you like and respect, maybe go spend a few days with them, learn how they're doing their business, um, dive into the business piece of it. Because at the end of it, what I realized, and you know, Tyler, we didn't get to, but after my breast cancer um, experience, I did a whole DVD for exercise recovery. I mean, it was, you know, I had all of the pieces there, but what wasn't there was the business aspect and the marketing side of it and how to get it into people's hands. And so alongside, even though the trainers were in it because we love fitness and love to work out and everything else to still carve out that time to develop your business aspect and marketing and learn as much as you can um, through that aspect and evolve with it. Because what was relevant um, and just to, to your point of change, what was relevant last year is not going to be the same this year. And so you just have to keep flexible and just keep that kind of fun about it. Have fun with it. You know, don't hate it so much. But the business aspect, uh, carve out time for that all the time and really uh, getting to know and met your mentors or your people that you um, 
respect in the in the industry. Oh yeah, and I can uh, speak to those for myself. The uh, the value of having a mentor to teach you new skill sets, but to even guide you. And uh, you know, there's so many things that are out there that sometimes we just don't know about them. And that's the opportunity that things like Fitness Fest provide trainers, group exercise instructors, other professionals, or even individuals that there may be enthusiasts now, and maybe they want to learn more about a topic. Here is an opportunity to go learn something new, open your eyes to an opportunity that you never thought possible when really it's, you know, just getting more information, uh, growing your knowledge base and, you know, you never know what's going to come up from there. And I think that, you know, from your mindset, your perspective, and even uh, what I know of your business, you know, it's almost a, a ever changing process, you know, the CBD industry, um, from what you've shared with me, it's uh, sometimes been an uphill battle. And even how you shared with me on the IT side of even selling CBD. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And just, just, Tyler, thank you for bringing that up because um, just this last, you know, in the last few weeks, especially with CBD and the um, banking industry and the merchant processing and everything, it can, it, it's a, it's, two steps forward, one step back and a lot still in this industry. And so we had to be very creative in how our marketing came about and which, which brought about the Phoenix fitness guide and uh, Phoenix fitness guide is this great little online platform that um, shares people what's happening in the Valley fitness events, um, highlights, spotlights, studios and trainers and really the best way to stay fit in Phoenix and ha with having the most fun because there's so many amazing things going on out there. I mean, there's yoga festivals, there's, you know, the, the Friday night things that are happening right now. And then five cave runs. I mean, there's a whole host of things that's happening in this, in this Valley. That's just there's no reason why you should not have a fun place to work out or enjoy working out. So the Phoenix fitness guide, um, simple Jane decided to sponsor this where they launch, we're launching with 90 classes and 90 days. So they're reaching out to studio owners and taking classes and really putting on the mend. So we're putting our top product, which is on the mend, uh, the balm and the oil and, and we're putting it to the test as far as this recovery goes and like using it through our workouts. So that in itself, like, um, that came out of, us really being shut down, our website being shut down for a few weeks of no sales. And so when you talk about challenges or things that come up, don't, don't ever be discouraged because, you know, what seemingly seems like a roadblock. This was one of the best things that could have, we could have ever done for our business is developing and collaborating on Phoenix Fitness Guide. A, we're in front of all the studio owners in the Valley highlighting their business right? We're giving them value. We're highlighting their business. And in the, in the whole process of it, they're learning a little bit about Simple Jane and how to use on the mend and their studios and things. And at the end of it, the consumer gets this great, like downloadable guide. The first one's going to be in August for all the fall, um, upcoming fall events. But like, you'll have all of the places that you want to work out and fitness events listed in one downloadable guide. And so the consumer wins too. So that came out of, um, a harsh reality of being shut down on the internet for a few weeks of like, okay, you know, how else are we going to make this thing work? So well, no, it's, uh, there's so many different pieces that us as business owners take for granted sometimes for me, just thinking about, you know, the process of, you know, setting up a merchant account, uh, uh online store, you know, in my head, it's like, Oh, easy peasy. You know, yeah, I, you know, I sell educational products. So it's like, oh, okay, I can go do this. You know, I could teach someone else to do it easy, but you know, the, the roadblocks that are there for you, but yet you keep that positive mentality and, you know, you don't get shut down after one, uh, you know, one incident comes up, you, uh, you strive forward and you look for other opportunities mm -hmm. to continue to grow the company, which I think, you know, any type of fitness professional can take, you know, you know, into to heart and really think about, you know, you might not get the job you wanted, or you might not get the class you wanted, or you might not get that client, but you just got to keep pushing forward, find other avenues and just keep, keep on it. 
Yeah, definitely. Because that's why a- athletes make such great business people. If if you can turn on that faucet, if you can get yourself into that mode, because we are like the determination. If you bring your athlete mind to your business mind, then then that's when things start clicking in, right? I mean, you, you're like, I'm not going to be defeated in this, you know, or I'm going to find a different way, or I'm going to do one more post, or, you know, you bring that athlete mindset to your business mindset, and it changes things, you know, the, the persistence level of things change. And so it's just about how you, you know, I have the saying of how you do anything is how you do everything. You know, if you approach things, it's like being a cancer survivor, you approach it like, I'm, I'm in this to win it, you know, and that's how most athletes are and studio owners and everything. I'm in it to win it. And you got to go and move forward. You just take that approach to your business And things start happening and unfolding. But at that same time, you have to be flexible enough to be, okay, if it's not my way, what are some other ways that we can approach this and work together to accomplish the same goal? So I love it. Exactly. What a great positive attitude. I love it. Thank you. Yeah. Before we wrap it up and find out where our listeners and viewers can find you, um, just wanted to touch on you and I spoke, I think it was about two weeks ago. Not only was I impressed with your your booth and your line of products, but I, I didn't know in until we started talking that you used to be a trainer and a certified and all that. And I could tell how knowledgeable you were. And so we spoke of you um, presenting a workshop at the 2020 Fitness Fest, which is April 16th through the 20th. We'll be back at the Sheridan at Wrigleyville in Northwest Mesa. So you and I were on the phone for quite a while, and I think it just clicked for both of us deciding on what what would really just line them up at the door for your workshop. Do you want to tell us what, uh, what your title and a little bit about the workshop that you're going to do for us um, in 2020 at Fitness Fest? I sure do. I, I couldn't wait for you to finish there. I am so excited about it. It's it's my best class ever. And I, I know everybody's going to love it. It's a stretch, rock and roll class. It's CBD stretch, rock and roll, where we'll be um, discussing not only, you know, uh, of course, the legalities and all the things that trainers need to know about when choosing a product and everything, but we're actually going to be showing the exercises that change the fascia, that change Fat for faster recovery and better performance. We're going to go through and use the uh, the stones, those salt stones. We're going to use those salt stones in the class. Show people the stretches to do with CBD because these things combine in the foam rolling. So most of the problem uh, are people that don't like foam rolling is because it's painful. So if you can take away that piece of it and do a quick rub down, you know, with CBD on your legs before you get on the foam roller, and we'll be going through some of the um, different ways that you can use it before classes, during classes and after classes, how trainers and studios can make money with the product. I mean, it's, it's going to be, well, how much time do we have for this thing? <laughs> <laughs> or you want to make it an eight hour one, huh? Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, we'll do a good 90 or 120 minutes. And remember that I am in the front of the class and I am your guinea pig. So you will be you yeah. know, rubbing the stone on me. So we just need to do that sample. I just wanted to make sure we put that in the contract, yes, right? Of course. You will be the first one to be demoed on. Everybody will be in, in lines. I'm, I'm so looking forward to this. And again, just being in front of these a lot of the missing components for people every day. When we talk to people at the conferences and unplugged and everything, they'd be like, I've got this, uh, you know, this tendonitis that's coming on and CBD just works so great with tendonitis. Your clients are going to love it, of course. And being able for you just as professionals, right at us professionals learning to recover better. And after so many years of being in the industry, that stuff wears down. So we need, you know, the best tools to learn learn how to recover. And I, I can't wait to share it with you. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. So, um, Angela, can you give us a little, uh, or our listeners, some information about where to find Simple Jane and at where they can even find you and maybe in the next couple months if they're, if we have listeners in the area? Yes. Thank you. Uh, you can always find us on Instagram where we're pretty active at Simple Jane Co. And at the at our main website, simplejane.co. Um, but where fitness professionals will find us is at simplejanefitpro.com. So that's simplejane 
fitpro.com. And that's where all of the information about how to use CBD before, during and after your class is going to be and the studio discounts and studio owners, you know, more information for studio owners and upcoming events and things like that. So simplejanefitpro.com and reach out to us online at Instagram, simplejaneco um, or at our main website at simplejane.co. Really great stuff. Really great stuff. So thank you, Angela, for coming on this, sharing your knowledge about CBD, how it relates to the health and fitness industry and telling your story, just showing the listeners, sorry, not showing, telling the listeners um, a different path that, you know, might come up along your lives and just really taking action with it. So thank you again, Angela and Janice. Thank you so much, Angela. It was great chatting with you again. And we look forward to growing our relationship. Yes. Likewise, you guys, thank you so much. And we'll see you in April for sure, but um, online until then, take care.